What's your baseball philosophy? What got you so far? Uh, as far as just... What got you here? I mean, just enjoying the game. You know, obviously, growing up as a kid, older brother, older sister, baseball and softball, respectively, both went to college, you know, played ball, so I grew up in and around the game. And it was kind of what I grew up knowing. That's where I, you know, grew up at the park, following them around, right, as kind of travel softball was getting crazy and my sister was going left and right places and my brother, like I said, um, he did some uh, some of the USA stuff, he went to Australia, the Goodwill Games and things like that. So I just grew up with the game. You know, it's kind of the only thing I knew growing up and even now, you know, it's it's a joy to come to the park, you know, and especially now, I, I love the clubhouse atmosphere, being with 25 other guys, you know, you kind of create that, that brotherhood with them, you know, I enjoy being here. Do you approach pitchers individually or do you have one basic approach? Um, no. Every, every guy is different. You know, you have to know who they are, their personalities, what buttons to push, or you try to learn that stuff, you know, as best you can. Because everyone has their own personality. Some guys you need to go out there and hit them in the butt. You know, other guys, you know, you need to kind of pat them in the butt and say, hey, you know. So you have to approach everyone differently. Now, as a first round draft pick, did that put more pressure on you? Uh, on yourself coming into the organization? I think I put more on myself than anyone outside could ever have. The expectations that I expect of myself are you know, through the roof. I think if they're not, you're not going to have success in this game unless you set expectations that high for yourself. With that being said, obviously, you know, there's expectations that come with being a first round pick. You're supposed to do this, you're supposed to do that. But I've come to realize playing in this game now, as long as I can get the work in and get the most out of you know what God has blessed me with then and I can shut it down eventually whether it's in two years or 20 years I can walk away from this game saying I gave everything to it I worked as hard as I could and I can live with that there's a lot of first-round draft picks they said man this guy's got all the talent in the world but sometimes when they get in the organization they're getting passed up by guys drafting the 50th round why does that happen I think because this is it's, it's a grinder you know and then once everybody gets to pro ball you're on a level playing field. Obviously, high picks tend to have. That's the word I'm looking for. I mean, they have, we can we can fail more. We have more opportunity. But ultimately, once guys get in a pro ball, everybody's in the same pool again. You know, obviously coming through high school, big fish in small pond. Same thing with high picks coming out of college. You know, they're big fish in the small pond. Once you get to pro ball, everybody's back in the same pond. You know, and and, and certain guys they might click with certain coaches or philosophies, different things like that, and you know, they may be late bloomers, anything like that. Now spring training, everybody brings more guys in to compete with you at your spot. They trade for guys, they sign free agents. How do you approach that? You can approach it just by doing what I can control on a day in and day out basis. Knowing that I can go out and get my own work in, and really, it's obviously a team game, but when you have other players competing for the you know, your position, different things like that. You can't control, hey, if, if, if Joe Blow goes out and he goes four for four, well, I gotta go five for five. You can't think like that, because if you think like that, you just get crushed. I can just show, hey, I'm gonna show up to the park, get my work in, try to have a quality at bat, try to help the pitching staff as best I can. And at the end of the day, say, hey, if I did everything I can, either it worked out in my favor or it didn't. Now, baseball is injuries, or you know, up and down the organization, you go to the big leagues, come back nice, send you back down, uh, and this happens to everybody in baseball. Has there been a time that you wanted to give this up? No, never, never. What are some of the things you learned about pro sports the hard way that nobody told you about before you started? Um, yeah, I mean, everybody expects, you know, the lifestyle of being on the road. And, you know, at the lower levels, you know, it's, it's not the easiest thing to do. You know, you're away from your family. You know, certain people can get homesick. You know, for me, I was pretty good with being on the road, but there were a lot of things I had to learn on, on taking care of myself, taking care of my body, eating right, you know, the little things like that, so that day in and day out I can come to the park and, and perform to as close to 100% as you can because the baseball season's a grind. You know, we play minor league season 140 games and you know, whatever it is, 160 days or so. Just that day in and day out consistent mental and physical grind. You know, I, I think I was prepared for it, but at the same time, I don't think you can ever truly prepare for it. That was the biggest thing for me. Now, obviously when you sign a baseball contract, you're a professional baseball player. Was there a time before that, that it dawned on you that you're gonna play in the major leagues? I mean, I think going back to, I think the first question you asked, you know, my aspirations of being a little kid was, hey, I wanna play pro baseball one day. And as I was getting closer and closer to, you know, upper levels in high school and started, you know, getting scouted by colleges and things like that. I'm 
came came to the realization. I said, hey, this is this is a, a reachable goal. You know, this is something I really can do. And I think once I finally got to that point, then I'm like, I'm just going to run with this and, and see where it can take me. I can always go back to school. You know, I'll never have the chance to play pro ball ever. That window is small. You the sports pages where um, Baseball America ranks you or Saturday yeah, Post, things like stuff. that. Anybody tell you about that? Mom, mom and dad call you and say, hey. No, I never. I, I, that's one thing, too, is set something out of my control. I can't control somebody else's opinion. You know, I can, can't, can't control if they say good things or bad things. You know, it's just their opinion. They're entitled to it. I can disagree with it, just like I'm entitled to my own opinion, but I stay away from all that stuff. How do you have the fans, people yelling and screaming, loud mouths and stuff? You just take it as, if they weren't yelling at you, it doesn't mean you're any good. <laughs> so, you know, you just take it. They're here. They're here to enjoy the game. You know, I try to think of it, hey, would they like it if I came to their office or something and was saying, hey, you suck, you know. You're terrible, things like that. So you think of it that you kind of you kind of joke with yourself about it, you know. But you just understand it's part of the game. You know, they're just they're being fans. Fans are being fans. How about the umpires? How do they handle the umpires? Um, as even kill as possible. You know, they're human beings. They make errors. You know, you have obviously some that are really good, some that aren't aren't so good. But you just try to deal with them because you understand they're humans. And they they make mistakes. You know, and as long as those guys are are you know not emotional and don't kind of you know, uptight about the things and they just say, hey, you know, unfortunately, I, I did miss it. You know, you just move on. You say, hey, you know, it is what it is. How about a high school kid? What would you tell a high school kid about professional baseball? What would you, it's, uh, a high school kid considering professional baseball, what just, would you tell him? Ultimately, you have to know, is this what you want? You know, I always thought, you know, I can go back to school later. My window to play isn't always going to be there. And just to be ready for, because it is, once you get into pro ball, you're a small fish in a really big pond. You know, don't be overwhelmed with it. Just say, I'm going to put my head down and I'm going to work. I'm going to listen. I'm going to take in, take in as much information as you possibly can and just try to get better, you know, and, and run with it if it's really what you want to do. All right, man.